Hey, East Fort Bible Church. I hope that all of you are doing well. Uh, I'll be honest, my heart has been pretty burdened and heavy the past uh, 10 days or so. Uh, there is a lot going on in our world that is heartbreaking, that is heavy, that is hard to process and navigate all that is going on. And so as I've just prayed and listened and just taken everything in, I've come up with three observations uh, and I just want to share these from my heart to your heart. And so first of all, racism is vile and abhorrent. And it is so deeply wrong. It is not even remotely close to the way God created us as humans and his creation to be. In fact, Genesis chapter 1 verse 27 it says, so God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. We each, all of us, are created in the image of God. Each and every one of us, wherever we're from, whatever nation, whatever skin color, whatever uh, experience or cultural background, we are created in the image of God of God and there is value in that. There is value in the way that we are created. We have imputed in us the very image of God. In Psalm 139 it says we are beautifully and wonderfully made. We are created in the way that God wants us to be and there is value and there is dignity and there is beauty in the way he has created each of us to be. And so somewhere along the line, we as humans have missed the plot. We've messed this up. It is sin. It's whatever it is that contributes to it. We have lost the plot. Even 1 Samuel says, man looks at the outward appearance, but God looks at the heart. And it's so easy for us, right, to look at the outward things. It's so easy for us to look at the surface but God cares so much more deeply about the heart and soul of a man, of a woman, of all of us, because we are created in his image and there is value and beauty in that. For us as a church, it is so important to not focus on our differences and our uniquenesses, but to say, how can we as a church value our uniquenesses? and our differences? How can we use the diversity that each of us bring to do what God purposes in this world? Because that is how he created us to be. He created us with his image, regardless of our skin color, regardless of our race, regardless of our culture, our experience, our background, our upbringing, whatever it is, we are created in God's image. The first thing is that racism is vile and abhorrent and totally in opposition to the way God created all things to be. The second thing is that it is so important for us to listen. And I know there's been so many calls in so many different arenas for people to listen, but my observation is that there are very few people listening right now. There are so many people speaking and so many people sharing different ideas but no one seems to really truly be listening. We're kind of taking in things, but we're just waiting to respond, waiting to have our opinion be heard, waiting to critique their opinion, but we're not truly listening. And I think that that goes back to the diversity with which God created us. There's so much that we have to learn from each other, and there's so much value in what we can learn from each other, but we need to listen. The book of James just challenges us in so, uh, such an important way in James chapter 1. It says, My dear brothers and sisters, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen and slow to speak and slow to become angry. I feel like we're kind of getting that opposite, that we're listening but we're just quick to speak. And we're quick to become angry when people say something that we don't agree with, that we don't ideologically believe in. But what if we just take things in and what if we listen? And I think that there's so much value 
in that. And the third thing is I've observed that there is a lot of guilt being poured out and guilt to get people to change. But in my experience, guilt doesn't do lasting change. Guilt just suppresses the reality and suppresses lasting change. And it just really drives more division and resentment. But the reality is, I think, to promote for us each as individuals, for us as a church, for us as a community, for us as humans to promote lasting change. Ephesians 4, 32, be kind and compassionate. We need to be kind and compassionate. Then it goes on to say, forgiving one another just as in Christ, uh, just as God forgave us through Christ Jesus. We need to be kind. We need to be compassionate. To me, if each and every one of us, if me, if you, if us as a church, we as a community, we as people, if we each strive to be kind, compassionate, forgiving, if we are quick to listen and slow to speak, if we are quick to value diversity, I think that's going to promote lasting change. That's going to promote change that I am so excited and thrilled to be a part of. And so Eastport Bible Church, we have a responsibility in this. We want to be a part of this change. We want to be a part of prom promoting humanity that we are all in God's image and we all have value and uniqueness and we all bring something incredibly special to the table. And so Eastport Bible Church, let us be challenged. Let our hearts be encouraged that we want to be a part of something amazing that God's going to do in us going forward and what God's going to do in our and through our community going forward. And so Eastport Bible Church, let's go together. Let's be a part of this change in some incredible, unique, and awesome ways. Let's go.